Marcus Conti reporting. When I'm out on the street, oh, 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 oh. I walk the way I want to walk. A little Springsteen for you early in the morning. So, I read this article. Thank you, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Thank you, Lucy. You brought this um, article to my attention about George Soros. Ah, enemy number one, right? Everybody hates fucking Soros, right? Well, this is going to give you something to hate him about. And it also raises the question, should we boycott elections? Right? So, Soros is a businessman, right? Whatever that means, right? Fucking screw the economy any way you can just to make a buck, right? That's the new... Soros is on the record as saying we don't consider the social ramifications of our actions. It's all about the money. Hillary Clinton loves this guy. They all love him, right? He's a hedge fund guy. They, he shorted the tide bottom, almost sunk the country. He's involved in so many shady deals and so many money grabs, it's hard to count them all. Allegedly sponsoring Antifa. Right? So we know who George Soros is, right? So, and it raises the question. He, he says in this article, he's basically saying, forget that, that elections are antiquated. The party systems within Europe, he's mostly pointing out, are antiquated. And that we should move towards austerity, discipline the countries that the, 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 the member countries that don't obey European command. Right? Now, is that exclusive to Europe? I know we're in America. A lot of you guys are watching from Europe, but is that going to have, is that, is that the, is that the new world order as, as it pertains to the United States as well? You're damn right it is. These guys want to eliminate fucking elections in the in countries so that the people don't have a voice. So this is Soros. I'll read for a little bit. Give you a good angle. There's a, I'm up here in a Penn Station area. Let me just find a better spot to better spot to hang out. A lot of tourists out. A lot of tourists. There's power in the people, right? These guys, that's what they're trying to do, man. They're trying to eliminate, they're trying to eliminate free and fair elections in our, in our, in our countries. Huh? So, this is George Soros speaking, right? The first step to defending Europe from its enemies, both internal and external, is to recognize the magnitude of the threat they represent. The second is to awaken the sleepy pro-European majority and mobilize it to, a defend, to defend the values on which EU was founded. So he's basically calling, he's calling, on, he's calling the sleepy masses, the sleepy Europeans, to fight back against breaking up the EU. Right? That's what he's saying. Right? Europe is sleepwalking in oblivion. The people of Europe need to wake up before it's too late. If they don't, European Union will go the way of the Soviet 1991, Soviet Union. That's a good thing. It's ready to break. Neither our leaders nor organized citizens seem to understand that we are experiencing a revolutionary moment, that the range of possibilities is very broad, and that the eventual outcome is highly uncertain. Well, you got to always hedge against Soros. When he speaks, he speaks in riddles, and usually what he's trying to promote is the is the exact opposite of what the people should have that's the sign of a you know a hedge fund wall street guy that's what they do they're betting against the people most of us assume that the future will 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 more or less resemble the present the future will resemble the present it's jargon but this is not necessarily so in a long eventful life i have witnessed many periods of what i call radical disequilibrium we are in such a period today. So Soros is saying we're in radical disequilibrium right now. He points to the next reflection point as being um, Parliament elect, uh, European Parliament elections in uh, 2019. He says, unfortunately, anti-European forces will enjoy a competitive advantage 
in the balloting. There are several reasons for this, including the outdated party system. What? The outdated party system. See, that's where he's, he's implying that, that dump the elections, just listen to us. And he goes on to talk about austerity. <laughs> Can't find a goddamn spot to sit down and stop and talk in the city. So, let's go this way. So, what else? So, he talks about the next reflection point. He says that um, there are several reasons for this, including the outdated party system that prevails in most European countries. The practical impossibility of treaty change, the lack of legal tools for disciplining member states that violate the principles of which the European Union was founded. Lacks, the EU lacks sufficient capacity to enforce member state compliance. Right? So he's basically saying, he's calling for austerity. Right? Discipline. Discipline. Un, un, uh, cooperative entities. Make them fucking do it, man. Your, your, your systems are antiquated. Elections? Party politics? The voice of the people? Are you kidding me? That's, a, that, that's what he's saying. It's antiquated. The antiquated party system hampers those who want to preserve the values on which the EU was founded. It's like reverse. It's like you know, he's saying the opposite, but helps those who want to replace those values, which sometimes, which something radically different. So he's saying that, he's saying that the, the antiquated party system is something that radicals want to preserve. But no, it's actually the opposite. It's, it's not replacing the values. It's returning to the values of the voice of the people. He's got it backwards, right? right. The party system of individual states refle reflects the divisions that mattered in the 19th and 20th century, such as the conflict between capital and labor. But the, but the cleavage that matters most today is between pro and anti-union, anti-European forces. Again, union bust, election bust. Right? This is what these guys are all about. He points to Germany, talks about um, how Germany is so powerful. Interesting what he says about the, the, the Brits. In the United Kingdom, an antiquated party structure prevents the popular will from finding proper expression. <laughs> the will, the will of elections and party politics... In, it, it interferes with the will of the people. That's what this idiot is saying. You can read the entire article down below. I put it down down in the uh, in the box if you want to read it um, for yourself. Brexit. Um, the situation is so. He's talking about Brexit. The situation is so complicated that no, most Britons Britons just want to get it over with. Although it will be a defining event for the country for decades to come. He's like, he's, like the, he's like the Antichrist, this guy, right? The public is also becoming aware of the dire consequences of Brexit. The chances that May's deal will be rejected on February 14th are growing by the day. That could set in motion a groundswell of support for referendum, or even better, revoking Brit Britain's Article 50 uh, notification. Right? So he's, he's, he's using the old... It's the old scare tactics. Scare the shit out of them. Right? Fucking, right? Austerity or, 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 or we're going we're gonna to starve you out using the EU. That's basically what they're saying, right? Let's cross the street. That's what he's saying. So, when it comes to uh, trans-European alliances... The situation is even worse. So now, see, that's where he points to the United States, right? Trans, trans-European alliances. We're an alliance. 
is even worse. National pol policy parties at least have some roots in the past, but the European alliances are entirely dedicated, dictated by party leaders' self-interest. He's calling the party leaders selfish. You are selfish. You should... You should bend over backwards for the EU. Fuck your elections, your antiquated, old-fashioned European idea of elections. That's Soros. It is difficult to see how the pro-European parties can emerge victorious from the election in May unless they put European interests ahead of their own. One can still make a case for pre preserving the EU in order to in order radically to reinvent it. But that would require change of heart at, in the EU. So he's suggesting that the EU is against a European Union, universally. I, of course he's right, because it doesn't work, right? It, it's a failed system. The globalist bullshit, it's bullshit. Right? It's, a, it's a power grab. They turned it into a power grab. Oh, look at this big fucking... I drop over here. <laughs> One can still make a case, right? So he's saying the current leadership is reminiscent of Politburo when the Soviet Union collapsed. He's making this 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 uh, ongoing revelation. Look at this one. <laughs> it's a giant teardrop, I think. So, um, right? So... So just to finish up, so the first step to defending Europe from its enemies, he's calling the people the enemies. People who want to break up the bullshit are enemies. Damn. From their enemies, both internal and external, is to recognize the magnitude of the threat they pre pre present. Threat to who? A threat to, to him and his, and his business cronies. I'll check this out. It's a hockey guy. <laughs> it's Madison Square Garden. That's the uh, $34 million Ranger, the goalie. Uh, so, 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 so they feel the billionaires are feeling threatened. That's what's going on, right? The second is to awaken the sleepy pro-European majorities, mobilize them for the values of Europe. The dream of a united Europe could become a nightmare of the 21st century. Right? They're running scared. That's the billionaires talking, right? So, Marcus Cotty reporting on uh, George Soros. And it raises... What, what it does is it raises the question... Right? The question that it raises is... We know the elections in our country are rigged. Right? We know that. Right? We have... There's so much evidence on the table. I interviewed Tim Canova, who ran against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Right? spoke to him many times and he he outlines for everybody exactly how they how they cheat right down in Broward County right the uh, Brenda Snipes remember where she where they they basically rigged the election there's no, it's not even it's not even arguable at this point Tim Canova got like 30 40 percent maybe even won the election and they put him down as five percent across all uh, all districts it's it's impossible it's statistically impossible right so the cheating is, is rampant. You know, it's not voter fraud. It's not illegals voting. It's, it's, it's blatant election fraud by the officials, the actual people responsible for counting the votes, the politicians, right? So do we, should we boycott the elections? Should we boycott the elections? Is that an idea? What's your thoughts on that? What's your thoughts on, on an election boycott? Right? Because what's the point? Don't, aren't we saying, by voting in a rigged election, aren't we saying that, that we, we, we comply? I mean, look at the progressive movement, right? All these guys, they think they're going to reform the Democratic Party. And they're just, all they're going to get is they're going to do all this work and they're going to get another hatchet in their back. Right? It's so obvious and so predictable. Right? Trump landslides it or whatever, right? So 
but not so much the presidency, the you know, House and House and, and Senate. Right? Cheat, 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 governors, mayors, cheat, 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 cheat. That's all they do is cheat, right? So if we boycott it, don't we send a signal? Right? Because the outcomes are predictable anyway, right? The outcomes are beyond our control. The politicians, are, you know, thirty million dollars to run a, uh, to steal a, to buy a Senate seat, three four million dollars to buy a Congress seat. Who knows how many millions to buy a mayor seat and a governor seat? Or you right? So if we just boycott the thing and, and refuse to participate, aren't we doing more than participate than 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 uh, voting and and getting excited about fake elections? It does make sense, right? It does make sense. But there's also this argument that. That's the library over there, New York Public Library. Right? It, but the, 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 the other side of that is that you're surrendering. You're, 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 surrend you're, you're giving them what they want, which is, yeah, yeah, elections, they don't matter. See? We told you so. No, 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 they're not fake. It's just that we told you so. Right? You, you run into that, you run into that, the category of we told you so. Right? So... Cops, <laughs> cop looked at me like this guy's fucking crazy. Um, so I don't know. That's my thoughts on it. I thought I thought that you know read the article, read it through, and um, let me know what you think of it. I mean, if it's a boycott that we need to do, uh, I, I'm close. I'm close to believing that 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 might be a, a, a way to go, right? Right? I mean, there, you got to you, first. You got to say the elections are rigged, right? And here the oligarchs are trying to they're trying to convince Europe that 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 the old party politics are antiquated, right? Marcus Conti reporting.